All right. Hey, everyone. We're back and better than ever. I'm here with Simon Perriman on how to overcome SCVMM's five biggest challenges. If you're not familiar with Simon Perriman, he is a Microsoft Hyper-V MVP, the president of FanWide, and you can find him at, at Simon Perriman on Twitter. And uh, hey, Simon, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Ryan. Good, good. And And I know that we started the presentation as the five biggest challenges, but I know that we received some customer feedback and we actually extended that to, to, uh, to eight or nine, right? That's right, we now have eight, so we're gonna give you guys a little bit of a bonus, kind of walking you through some additional best practices as well. Fantastic, so we thought we were gonna get five, we're actually gonna get eight, so we're gonna give even more value. So we hope you enjoy today's presentation. Uh, so let me just kind of go over the format today. So what we're gonna do is Simon's gonna go through uh, a bit of, of the high level challenges that, that uh, him and, and uh, R59 customers, and then also uh, uh, Microsoft customers have found you know, with SCVMM and some tricks and best practices on how to avoid them. Uh, we'll also uh, provide a demonstration of the 5.9 Manager Data Center a product with a nice little surprise that you have to wait until the end to hear about uh, and in terms of how uh, you know, that might be an alternative uh, to uh, uh, SCVMM if, if that would suit your um, use case. And then also uh, what we're going to do is if you stay until the end, we're going to do a $100, uh, $100 Visa gift card drawing, uh, but you have to be present to win. So everybody who's on the line now, stay on the line. We're going to do a drawing at the end and we'll call out a, a name and, and we'll send you a $100 Visa gift card if you're selected. Uh, we'll also leave about 10 to 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. Uh, so hope everybody sticks around and enjoy the show. With that, Thank I'll you give very it much. Simon. Awesome. And once again, thank you for joining this webinar presented by Five9 Software. Now, a little bit about Five9. First, the company was established back in 2009, right after the launch of Hyper-V, with the key goals of looking to address some specific challenges and some specific gaps left by Microsoft. So Five9 really focused on kind of two key areas here. One was around management of the Hyper-V infrastructure, and the second one was around securing and protecting that infrastructure. Now, Five9 has almost 100,000 users globally now, enterprises of all sizes, taking advantage of these technologies provided by Five9. We're gonna talk a little bit about Five9 Manager today, how that compares and contrasts with System Center VMM. But if you're also looking at security solutions to on-premise, public cloud, as well as hybrid cloud, Five9 provides a great suite of tools. Additionally, as a way that we help embrace the hype of the environment, we also bring VMware and AWS users over to the Microsoft stack. So if you are currently using one of those other hypervisors, thinking about moving to Microsoft technologies, make sure that you check out the 5.9 v 2 v Easy Converter as well. So as Ryan mentioned, we're gonna cover a variety of technologies and make sure that you stay around for the end to win a gift card. First, we're gonna give a quick demo and intro to SCVMM, walk through some of these different challenges and then talk about how several of them can be addressed with new tools and technologies provided by Five9. First, let's take a quick look at System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Now, I've gone ahead and switched over to a demo environment, and I'd highly recommend using the TechNet Virtual Labs as a way that you can actually get hands-on through this remote environment. And what's great about this is you could do this to test out System Center technologies, and you can also do this through Five9's website if you wanna try all different 5.9 technologies. But let's take a quick look at System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Now, this is essentially the technology designed to manage your cloud infrastructure. The first section that you'll see here are the settings that allow you to configure a couple of different user roles, so they are limited. It also allows you to connect to different System Center components. So for example, if you wanna do monitoring, you would go and connect Virtual Machine Manager to your operations manager interface. The next piece that System Center offers is your ability to review different jobs and tasks. So this essentially gives you a unified view of all of the different events that are happening around your entire environment. System Center also provides a concept of a library. This is essentially a highly available file server and file share. From this library, you have the ability to create templates and different types of pre-configured components that you may want to reuse multiple times, such as redeploying the same VM with the exact same configuration, taking a look at different services, 
or also running things such as scripts and your Windows Server updates. Now, as we move on to the core infrastructure, we take a look at both the fabrics and the VMs and services. Now, Fabric is essentially all of the hardware that gets combined and used by your cloud. The Fabric consists of servers, which could be individual hosts, or they could be clusters. Now, using SCVMM, you have standard management capabilities, such as testing a cluster, refreshing it, or viewing the properties. You'll also see a node here for infrastructure, and this allows you to hook in and monitor other services that SCVMM is going to be dependent on, such as your library servers, your update servers, your boot servers. And SCVMM even gives you the ability to manage VMware vCenter. Now, there's also networking components that you can manage, physical networks and logical networks. Now, these can get a little cumbersome as, as you see, there's a whole lot of different names and terminologies that are provided to these different virtual and physical networking components. For the sake of time, we're not going to dive into these today. The final section under Fabric is going to be your storage. This is where you can classify any different type of shared storage that's accessible to your host. This could include iSCSI, Fiber Channel, SAS, Serial Attached SCSI, or SMB shares. From here, you can provide different types of classification and get different types of information around the storage itself. The final section that we will take a look at here is going to be our virtual machines and services. These are essentially the applications that we're running on our different hosts. So first, we have a concept of a cloud, which is essentially a resource pool. This cloud contains different virtual machines and other different resources that are made available to it. So you could have a cloud for your engineering department, and maybe you have a cloud for your operations. Down here, you can see our different hosts, different support infrastructure, and all of the virtual machines which are contained on it. From here, you get some basic information about the VMs themselves. Now, at first glance, System Center VMM looks like a great tool. I mean, it gives you all the basics that you're gonna need, but there are some challenges that come with SC VMM that it's important for us to make you aware about. The first challenge that we often hear about comes around deployment and configuration. And this is primarily because SCVMM is a distributed infrastructure. You do not get everything within the same component. In fact, even within System Center VMM itself, during the installation, you have to go and set up separate components. It's recommended to run them on separate servers. There's separate installation processes. So it could take a little bit of time to get things up and running. This is essentially where you're splitting up your management server, which is the brains of the operation, from your management console, which is how you interact with the server, from your SQL database. And SQL server, <laughs> excuse me, is required for system center. You can't use the live version. You can't use any other databases. So you do have that hard dependency on SQL server, and you do need to get that licensed as well. Now, if you want to include some other standard management features, such as backup, that requires DPM. Monitoring requires operation manager. Security requires configuration manager or the Azure Security Center. And being able to do self-service requires App Controller, Windows Azure Pack, or Microsoft Azure Stack. So some of our best practices, you know, make sure that you do a lot of planning around this deployment before you get it up and running. You know, one misconfiguration in your SQL database instance we'll go and break that entire infrastructure. Now, it's always recommended with any infrastructure as well to virtualize it where possible. When you're virtualizing any of the system center roles, this means that we can clone them, we can scale them up or scale them down, and they're not bound to any specific hardware, giving you flexibility when you need to update that hardware by live migrating those VMs between different hosts. We also recommend high availability as well. Put those VMs inside a cluster so that if one of those hosts fails, we can automatically detect the crash and we go and start that service on a different host in the cluster. Now, another option that a lot of people are starting to do if they're going towards a hybrid model or an all-cloud model is deploying certain components of System Center up in the public cloud, up in Microsoft Azure. Probably the most common one that we see here is OMS, the Operations Management Service. This is essentially operations manager in the cloud. It allows you to send all of your data up to the cloud and all of the reportings 
analytics and data warehousing is done by Microsoft so that you don't need to set up that own infrastructure on site. So make sure as you're looking at your deployments now, you really understand what your future direction is with on-premise or how you're trending towards the cloud. Now, the next biggest challenge that we hear from SCVMM is the centralized management. You know, SCVMM requires multiple screens and interfaces, and there's really no easy way to directly connect and view multiple virtual machines that you're managing. Essentially, you have to go and set up unique remote desktop connections and credentials to each and every one of them. And that's not to mention the fact that these other uh, important system center components like monitoring with operations manager or backup with data protection manager, those are still gonna require you to have an entirely separate product. So when you really are trying to do this scale up automation, you know, consider using tools such as PowerShell. PowerShell is Microsoft scripting language that supports all these different services and roles. And so it allows you to manage everything from a single interface but it's a scripting interface. It's still not a GUI. Now, we also recommend another way to help solve this is to set up emailing for different types of alerts. This way, you don't have to actively monitor as many systems at once, but you can really centralize all of that information and just get reports in real time when you need them through email. Now, a great thing about 5.9 Manager Solution, as we'll show you in a little bit, is we actually allow you to do RDP connections, connect to the guest console, immediately for every VM under management, making it a breeze to jump and move between all of these different systems. So Simon, it really seems like, uh, you know, between the, the deployment and configuration, plus all the different, uh, uh, you know, screens that one would have to, to properly manage their enterprise Hyper-V environment, that, that it's pretty intensive on the amount of resources that are required mm. to operate something like that. That certainly is true, you know, as more and more people are adding resources, there really are a lot of scale limits that can be hit. You know, Microsoft recommends up to about a thousand, uh, sorry, 10,000 VM, sorry, a thousand hosts, 25,000 VMs maximum that can be managed. So depending on your deployment, it can be hard. But you did bring up a good question, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that do have their own SCVMM challenges. So I think now is a great time for a poll question. And if you wouldn't mind pushing that out, Ryan, Sure. We can go and ask the audience here, what are the biggest challenges that you've seen with SCVMM? So if you could take a moment to take a look at the Pilot interface, you'll see a couple of different options. First is around deployment and configuration. We have monitoring, management, backup and recovery, and other. And if you select other, Please also send us a note in the chat window to tell us what is that problem? You know, we'd love to make sure that we get that feedback because what's important to 5.9 is that we hear from the customers and we try to specifically address those issues that you are and other people are having with SCVMM. So we'll keep the poll open for about another five seconds or so. It looks like we've got about uh, 50 or 60 people voting already. That's great feedback. And it looks like about 55% of the people are having trouble with deployment and configuration, about 15% with monitoring, 20% with management, 10% with backup and recovery. So it looks like there's some breadth, but certainly a lot of people are having those issues with the deployment and configuration. Thanks for all the feedback. We'll close that first poll. Let's go back to the presentation. So the third issue that we're gonna take a look at here it's around backup, recovery, and monitoring. Now, anytime you deploy a virtual machine, the best practice is to immediately start protecting it. It's really important to make sure that you have a great plan around backup and recovery. Not just to make sure that you back things up regularly, make sure that you store them remotely or in the cloud, not on that local host, but most importantly, make sure that you test recovery as well. One of the most common reasons why people fail with their backup and recovery plan is due to a lack of testing. And when a problem really happens and it's time to recover the data, it fails at that point in time. So make sure that you keep in mind recovery is a key part of your backup plan and strategy. But probably the biggest challenge that we hear about backup with SUVMM is that those capabilities are not native within VMM itself. This requires you to go and set up system center DPM, which is a se separate utility. Now it comes part of the system center suite, so it's not an additional license, 
but it's still going to be a new dedicated service that you run. And you're going to want to have those copies, those backups, again, stored in a dedicated offsite location. Now, wherever you store those virtual machines, you need to make sure that both the backup server can access them, as well as any recovery servers or recovery hosts. So this means that you're going to want to put your backup on some type of shared storage that is going to be globally accessible by all of the different hosts that may need to create the backup or that may need to recover from that backup as well. Now, one solution which can help a little bit is the ability to create virtual machine templates and service templates. Now, here's an incredibly important distinction. Using these templates, you're backing up the configuration of that virtual machine or the group of virtual machines. You're not backing up the data which is contained in it. So again, System Center, it gives you, uh, VMM gives you the ability to copy a virtual machine, which means the networks, the names, the properties, the security setting, the firewall settings, all of those key pieces to get that VM up and running, but any data that's stored on it will not be protected. You do need to go deploy DPM or another great third-party backup solution. Great thing with 5.9 Manager, we have built-in backup and recovery all in a single console. Now, the fourth challenge that we hear from a lot of SCVMM customers is the ability to manage all of these remote network connections. Now, you can again go and initiate an RDP connection, remote desktop connection from SCVMM to a specific VM. But for each and every VM to connect to that guest console, you're prompted to go into the credentials, you're prompted to log in and basically initiate a new RDP connection. Now, this means that managing the permissions can be tough or complicated. And so if you're an administrator managing dozens or hundreds of VMs, you're probably going to go ahead and use another third-party tool. Now, Microsoft provides a nice one using a utility known as RDP Manager. So if you do a quick Google search for RDP Man, you'll be able to find that. And it's basically an interface that allows you to go and list every server. And then appropriate connections to that, you know, the usernames and the passwords. So to reconnect to a server or a group of servers, simply click on it. Now, people have been asking System Center, DMM, to go and integrate this for at least eight years, back from my days working at Microsoft on the engineering team. It's never been done. It's not going to happen. So Fundam really tried to address this problem, and they've actually built all of these RDP connection technologies right into the latest version of 5.9 Manager Data Center, so basically unifying these important tools. So as you're going through this, you know, make sure that you save these connections, configure your user roles, your different accounts. Now, the other challenge that we hear around remote management is setting up different types of virtual networks so that you can go and access those services. Network virtualization, software-defined networking, it is painful. I don't think there's a single person that's ever said it's easy. You know, you're essentially layering networks on top of other networks, creating all these new types of virtualized routing components. Setting it up with SCVMM, it can be a challenge. Now, if you want some good guidance, I would encourage you to take those TechNet labs that I showed you earlier. We built an entire section dedicated to testing software to find networking. But if you are still continuing to look for a unified solution to connect to your VMs and connect to your network, all of this SDN software to find networking functionality has also been built into the latest version of 5.9 Manager. One of the other challenges we hear related to backup and recovery as well is being able to do Hyper-V replication. Now, let me take a step back and kind of explain the scenario why this technology is important first. So back in Windows Server 2012, Hyper-V released a technology known as Hyper-V Replica. It was enhanced in 2012 R2 and has been made really first class in 2016. Now, what Hyper-V Replica does is it essentially copies the virtual hard disk the data file for the VM and moves it to a second or a third location. It gives you the ability to then track changes from the original disk and replicate those changes to your new location. So it's kind of like a real-time backup system. You make a change in site A, the system tracks those changes and then makes the change in site C and possibly replicates that over to an additional third or fourth site. This allows you to have high availability between data centers. 
uh, really designed for disaster recovery. You know, let's say there's a hurricane that's coming in. You know that you're likely going to lose power to your data center. Well, in advance, you can trigger this disaster recovery plan. It goes and moves all of your services to a safe zone, and you can continue to run your business without having any type of downtime or service unavailability. This is incredibly important technology, but the biggest limitation around System Center, it's entirely unsupported. There is no way to take this core Hyper-V replica technology, which is built into Windows Server, and expose it through SCVMM. It's really just an engineering gap where the engineering teams just were not able to go and build this technology in time, despite all these customer requests. So it means that if you do want to use the built-in Hyper-V replica technology within System Center, you've got to go back to Hyper-V Manager and configure and manage it entirely independently. Now, this replication is important, right? You have options to try to minimize the data loss. You have options about how fast it can replicate based on your network speed. And you could kind of control the distance of your sites based on your network bandwidth. It's incredibly important to make sure that you monitor this. And similar to a backup, you want to be testing it regularly so that it works and making sure that you test your recovery regularly as well so that you can bring your services back online. Great thing about 5.9 Manager, we have gone ahead and built all of these Hyper-V replica technologies straight into the 5.9 Manager product. So you do not have to go to all these different interfaces to test the health, do your monitoring and management. We've unified this incredibly important experience. Now, as you start and to build seems, your high uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> I was just going to make a comment. You know, I, I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but it, it seems like you know, and and as as a more you know non technical person, that the the replication kind of gap closely aligns with uh, you know the the uh, backup and recovery gap that you're going to speak about a little later. It certainly does. You know, a lot of people would say the replication is kind of they call it poor man's backup. It's easier to set up, it's easier to recover, easier to test. But the challenge of replication is there's some potential data loss. Now, the way replication happens is, you know, every five minutes, we'll take a replica. So that means, you know, minute one, there's data changes. Minute two, minute three, minute four, things have been changing in the database. If I lose my connection or my server crashes at minute four, I've potentially lost that four minutes of data because it has not yet been copied over to the secondary site. So one of the cool things about Hyper-V Replica is there are three settings, and you can kind of look at the trade-offs as performance and data loss. You can set your Hyper-V Replica to protect every 30 seconds, every five minutes, or every 15 minutes, kind of depending on your speed. Now, everybody would naturally say, well, why wouldn't I do 30 seconds, right? I want to minimize the amount of data loss I can have. Well, if you trigger it down and make it go to 30 seconds, that means that you're having to do these replications twice a minute or 10 times as often as you would be doing with the five minute replication cycle. And so that means there is gonna be a performance hit on your network and on your disk as you are doing this fairly intensive task more frequently. So depending on your kind of uh, how much data you can lose, that's gonna be one of the trade-offs to decide do I do replication and accept a little bit of data loss or should I go with a traditional backup and have no data loss? Great questions, though. Now, as a lot of people continue to build up and grow their Hyper-V environment, they're gonna add more and more Hyper-V hosts. So managing at scale can start to become an issue. Now, System Center VMM itself is designed for what we'd call more traditional data centers. You have one data center with 100 hosts. Maybe you have a second site for DR, maybe a third site because you're growing. So for that kind of configuration with large sites, many hosts, SCVMM is a great solution. However, there's a big challenge of when they start to look at things such as branch office or retail scenarios. Let's say I have 100 retail stores spread around the country. Each of those stores has a two no clustering. Well, in this case, I'm now managing 100 sites with 200 hosts and maybe four or 500 VMs. Even though those scale numbers may be less than these traditional data centers when you aggregate everything, the fact that we have to manage so many sites makes a huge amount of change around how networks are being managed. And this is something that SCVM just doesn't support. 
Again, SCVMM, great for those traditional data centers, one or two large sites with lots of hosts, but you're not gonna be successful in trying to manage this through in these branch office scenarios. So much so that Microsoft says it's not supported. We've worked with their engineering team on multiple engagements for 5.9, and ultimately they end up recommending 5.9 Manager as it is designed and it is built for these branch office scenarios. Many sites with one or two hosts per site. So as you are thinking about managing at scale, you know, kind of look at which deployment model makes sense for you. And if you do start to hit these limitations with an SCVMM, you may need to switch over to PowerShell and go back to a traditional PowerShell scripting for these large scale. Now there are always hardware enhancements to speed things up that you can use. For example, if you use SSDs, fast storage, such as fiber, the data is gonna be able to go in and out your system much faster, allowing you to scale more efficiently. Network bandwidth is probably even more important. So as you think about having more sites, more communication going between them, try to use the fastest networks possible. Quality of service or QAS is another feature that's built directly into the Windows Server platform that you can use to help kind of control network traffic. With quality of service, you can basically specify a particular network, such as your storage fiber network, or your network that does health checks between the site, and you can prioritize that traffic. Conversely, you can limit less important traffic. So, you know, some people may say backup traffic's the most important, some people may deprioritize that. You can say that the traffic going to your backup system is less important than your real-time customer traffic. So make sure that you are familiar with these built-in software and hardware management capabilities for your storage and your network to help you scale. You know, and I was just thinking, Simon, you know, in addition to the, the branch offices and department stores, you know, we've also had customers going through uh, mergers or acquisitions and have consolidated areas of IT and, and kind of needing uh, kind of the flexibility of, of scalability there, too. That's a great example, Ryan. Um, to your point about an M&A, you know, if one company acquires another, you obviously want to start to merge your IT infrastructures. And, you know, assuming that you have a somewhat consistent technology stack, you're going to want to unify that management. SCVMM is going to give you an ability to do that if you're looking at a VMware and Hyper-V environment. Um, but certainly, as you look to combine these, you are going to have to continue to think about scale. So make sure as you pick a virtualization management solution, you're not just thinking about today or a year from now. You want to be thinking about how you're going to go and manage the service five to ten years from now as well. Now, if you do want that service to be around in five to 10 years, make sure that you have security planning designed up front as well. Perhaps nothing is more important than virtualization security. You know, the reality is every hacker knows about virtualization. Every hacker is trying to exploit it. You know, are, are the bad guys, the black hats, the malicious users today, don't think that they don't know about these new higher technologies provided by VMware and Hyper-V. They know everything about them because most environments, most data centers are now running. And you need to treat virtualization security a little bit different than how you would treat traditional physical security. Now, System Center itself, VMM doesn't have any security tools built into it. However, System Center Configuration Manager, which is available with an additional System Center license, now will allow you to do traditional Windows security Make sure that your configuration of the host is ideal. And it allows you to also deploy different Windows service, server updates and patches to it. Microsoft Azure also has its own Azure, configura uh, Azure Security Center that you can go and hook your private cloud infrastructure to, and it can do some monitoring and reporting on that private cloud infrastructure. However, if you are looking for a cloud-based security solution that you have to run on-premise, you're not comfortable sending your logs and other information up to Microsoft's public cloud, you can take advantage of 5.9 as we have security built into the product with our own antivirus additions. Now, 5.9 Manager gives you the ability to go and basically monitor all of the virtual networks. Traditional security solutions, they often will only take a look at the physical networks as well. Now, virtual networks are critical because they're gonna be sending data from one host to another host. They're gonna be sending data within a single host and between one VM to another VM. So if you have a legacy 
security solution that's only monitoring your physical networks, you're going to miss a lot of traffic. And potentially, you can infect an entire host before you even notice about it. Another best practice is to make sure that you're always automatically protecting every single newly deployed virtual machine. As soon as you spin up a new VM and it's on the network, it's vulnerable to being attacked. So you want to make sure you have a security solution that's going to offer automatic and immediate protection for every VM that you spin up. And we found that the easiest and best way to do this is to use a virtual firewall to make sure that any newly created VM is automatically deployed behind this virtual firewall to make sure that the connection settings are deny all by default so that nothing can get to it. And we can try to take advantage and use all of these different technologies using Five9's own built-in security solution, which has been optimized for virtual environments, specifically for Hyper-V. It's going to monitor all your virtual networks. It's going to analyze all of the traffic on private and public networks, on physical and virtual. And Five9 also has extremely efficient disk scans. This is a huge problem when it comes to virtualization security. If you're going and doing a scan on a, uh, on a shared storage unit that hosts VMs, remember, scanning that disk is going to slow that disk down, which means it's going to slow all of the VMs running on that disk down. So whenever you're thinking about security, think about virtualization optimized security. Don't get a traditional security solution and assume it's going to work for your Hyper-V environment. It will not. Make sure that you get one that has been tested, validated, and is Hyper-V approved. Um, a couple of the best practices here as well, use BitLocker. BitLocker makes sure that you are protecting the physical disk. So if somebody actually breaks into the data center and tries to steal the physical server, the physical storage, you're protected as well. So again, traditional security best practices, they can be followed with virtualization, but make sure you take advantage of all of the ones specifically designed for virtual. reporting, not monitoring. And I think there's an important distinction. Reporting gives you the ability to see action that's taken at a point of time, essentially by generating a report. Monitoring allows you to show real-time information about the health at that point in time. So with System Center DMM, you can take a look at configuration information. You can see the basic health of services and availability as you see in the screenshot here. If you want to include the monitoring, the real-time alerts, you have to go and set up System Center Operations Manager and create a connection between the two. And essentially what happens then is every time SCVMM makes a change, it writes that to an event log, it sends it over to Operations Manager, and Operations Manager is monitoring those changes, visualizing them, and then sending an alert in case there's a problem. So this is critical in an environment because as an IT manager, you're not going to be sitting in front of a console and monitoring things in real time, right? You have a job. You have other stuff to do. So you have to make sure that you set up alerts. You have to make sure that you set up notifications, such as making sure that you, send, you receive an email when a problem happens. Basically, your best practice around monitoring is to set up the environment so it monitors yourself, and you get an alert as soon as there's a problem, as soon as there's a configuration drift or any other type of change. So what we're trying to do with Five9 Manager, and you'll actually see a demo coming up real soon, we have built-in monitoring, all of the functionality of Operations Manager built into Five9 Manager products. So there's no additional configuration, no additional settings. You just get to see the reports that happen in real time. So if you want to use SCVMM, make sure you set up Operations Manager, but there certainly are other third-party tools out there that can make this easier. And with that, Today, we're going to be announcing the release of version two of Five9 Manager Data Center. This is really taking the best solutions, the best technology for all of the Microsoft technologies. It's addressing all of these challenges presented by System Center VMM and solving them 
in a unified, easy to use GUI interface. So with Find My Manager version 2.0, we manage large environments, more than these 10,000 virtual machines. We support the distributed environments, the branch office scenarios. We support easy multi-tenancy, allowing multiple users to go and interact and control the resources that they should have access to. And we've included all these additional system center components within the same product. So you don't have to set up BPM if you want to do backup. That's built in. You don't have to set up operations manager for monitoring. That's built in. You don't set up configuration manager for security. That is built in. So all of these great solutions are now available to you in a single interface. So and I got to say, Simon, features, yeah, I, I go got to say that, 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 you know, I I'm just really excited uh, about this release. You know, we're, we're, we're codenaming it the ultimate uh, VMM experience uh, for the enterprise. Uh, just the scalability, the ease of use, the simplification of deployment and configuration of this lightweight solution. I'm just really excited that, that you're here, that you're introducing the solution uh, to the world and that you're gonna demonstrate some of the really awesome things that we have coming in uh, MDC 2.0. I will, thanks Ryan. And you know what, before I dive into this slide and kind of talk you through some of these newest enhancements, why don't we go ahead and launch our second poll question as well? Oh, that's a great idea, yeah. Just uh, just give me one, one second, guys, okay. And so, so our second poll question is gonna ask, um, how many Hyper-V hosts do you have inside your environment? And so what we're trying to gauge is, you know, your customer type here. Are you looking at us from the perspective of, you know, a smaller organization, one to 10 hosts, an SMB that might have that 11 to 20 hosts, large organization, kind of in that 20 to 50 host range, or a very large organization, if you're managing anywhere from 50 or more hosts. And these don't have to necessarily be Hyper-V hosts. You know, these could also be any combination of your hypervisors, VMware, Citrix, Zen, and ultimately, just give us that feedback, tell us how big you are, because what we found is SCVMM, it really was originally designed for these massive large enterprises. It's been trying to move a little more to the mid market, but with the cost, with the licensing challenges, with the complexity, only about 2% of all system center customers classify as SMB. 98% still fall within that enterprise tier. So we'll wrap up the poll here. Thank you, everybody. It looks like more than half of you have voted. We've got about 40% in that zero to 10 range, about 20% of you, 11 to 20, 20%, 20% 20 in those other tiers as well. So about 40% small and then 20% medium, large and very large. Thank you for the feedback, everyone. Yeah, seems like a pretty uh, uh, well-distributed group, Simon. Usually I don't see it that distributed, absolutely. Well, great to hear, you know, it seems like we'll be able to offer solutions that do kind of fit into all of those tiers as well. Because with 5.9 Manager, we really did design it for the SMBs to use as well. Easy to set up, easy to license, and everything all built into a unified console. Now, some of the newest features, and I'm going to demo these as well, is logical group viewing. So if you think about how traditional virtualized environments are displayed, it's a hierarchy. You know, you look at your data center, your clusters, your host, down to the VMs. We provide an easy way to go and filter that, to take it out of a hierarchy, and to basically organize by logical grouping of services. So all of your networking components, your storage component, your hosts, your clusters, et cetera. We've continued to enhance the monitoring, which is built into 5.9 Manager, giving you that real time with a lot of new and more insightful views. We give you better ability to manage your storage, your VHDs, your ISOs, basically all of those virtualization components which are made available to the entire infrastructure. And we continue to enhance Hyper-V Replica, which is built in directly to the product, letting you configure it, make it highly available, monitor it, and test recovery and fail back. So what kind of differentiates as well? Backup and monitoring. This is something which, again, not available in SCVMM, built directly into 5.9 Manager. Remote management, giving us the ability of remote desktop manager built directly into the 5.9 Manager product. So you don't have to configure and manage all these different users and roles. 
With this distributed management, we also allow you to easily create different roles for tenants, for administrators, making sure that the right person only has access to the resources that they should see. We've built the scalability around these branch office scenarios. And we continue to work on making this a financially reliable solution. Instead of with Microsoft making you buy additional components and services, if you want to go and add security or cloud-based services, we continue to add these into our product with each iteration. And we'll continue to do that to help drive down your lower cost of ownership. So you no longer have to buy a separate security solution or a separate backup solution or a separate monitoring solution. So our proposal is set it up, very easy to use. Once you're up and running, it's gonna save you a whole, whole lot of time and reduce your training costs. And particularly if you're a VMware user, we've designed the interface to look and feel a lot like vCenter. So it makes that transition and that migration much easier, helping you get up and running sooner. If you do wanna learn more about this, make sure that you visit 59.com slash data center. So again, we have really tried to address these specific challenges presented by System Center from configuration, backup, reporting, management, replication, scale security, and monitoring. And so and what I will let's say, go ahead. Just, just, just to add yeah. on to that, Simon, and sorry for interrupting. If you guys go to 59 Manager or uh, 59.com slash data center, uh, we have a sneak peek uh, a preview trial available of the new MDC 2.0. Uh, so be sure to go there, uh, fill out the form, and you'll, you'll be able to, to try the solution for yourself. So really exciting to, to follow up on what, uh, what we're talking about after Simon gets his demonstration. Thanks, Ryan. And so in the meantime, I went ahead and I switched to our remote desktop connection. This is a live lab environment hosting 59 Managed Data Center. And the first thing I'm gonna show you now is our easy administration around security. So for us, we really wanted to simplify the roles, full access, basic access, read-only access. And from here, you actually have the granular ability to go and configure, enable and disable each and every operation. So for example, using my read-only role here, read-only functionality, I wanted to go ahead and only enable it only enable certain features and roles for each of these different discrete operations. So we really do make the security of management for 5.9 Manager extremely easy to use. Next thing we'll take a look at is backup. Backup is now built in directly to 5.9 Manager. So I have the ability to take a look at my traditional tree hierarchy, my two node cluster, pick different virtual machines, pick different services that I want to backup, and I also want to highlight the second view that we mentioned that allows you to basically categorize these different resources. Here's my workloads, here's my host, here's my different clusters. So if I go back to my traditional view here, my regular data center, what we can see is different backups that I've already created. Now creating a backup, it's extremely easy to do. We simply say create a new backup. It's going to ask me some basic questions. What type of encryption do I want to use? We can go all the way up to AES-256. You know, that's extremely, extremely secure, a top industry standard. We can provide an encryption key, change different compression settings. We can select which virtual machines I want to encrypt. We'll go and encrypt this test one. I select where is the storage going to be for this backup. So where are we actually placing this backup file? Pretty easy for me to go and select any storage or any folder that's already part of this network. As I browse the storage, I can go pick any specific disk. So again, we've really tried to unify all of the management experience. I can schedule the frequency of my backup, whether it's a full backup or it's an incremental backup, only looking at the deltas, how often I wanna keep it, confirm the settings, and creating a backup is really that easy. Now for us to recover a backup, pretty straightforward as well. We have the ability to see all of our different backups, filter them, and see the frequency. And any time that we have a problem, for example, one of these failed or had an error, we can go and configure alert so that I see this in real time whenever there's a problem. Next, we're gonna go and take a look at built-in management. 
This would be equivalent to what you would get out of Operations Manager. From our monitoring, we go and take a look at all of our different hosts and nodes, and I have the ability to view everything at these different tiers. So I can take a look at all the information at the data center level. I can then filter that down to the cluster level. I can filter that down to the host level. And I can figure that down to the individual virtual machine. So this gives me a nice, quick way to easily view all my issues and to go and then drill down into them. Now here I can see things such as capacity information, the health of my VMs, the state of my VMs. I also get all of my different alarms that are built in here. So we basically are centralized in all of the error reporting and monitoring. So I don't have to go and look at different tabs to try to go and do troubleshooting and resolution. I can even go and filter what types of alerts and displays that I have on here so that I can get rid of noisy information. At the very bottom, you can also see that we have CPU usage, memory, disk, network traffic, all provided to us in real time. Now, configuring the alerts is important as well. We get different types of thresholds that I can set. So for example, if I wanna go and configure my resource alerts at the host level, I have the ability to go and say, when do I wanna see an alert? What is the threshold when it goes above or below a certain amount? And again, that's configurable at the host, VM, and cluster level. We also have notifications built in, so I can easily enable email notifications. I simply provide my SMTP server, email address that it's sent from, and multiple email addresses. So anytime there's a problem, we can in real time go and alert the admin. We can also configure which alerts I care about. So this gives us the ability to go into all of these different event logs that we monitor. They're selected by default and go and disable particular warnings that we may not care about. So again, centrally managing everything into a single interface. Now we can break that down as well across different resource metrics. So looking at the CPU, where I see my errors, looking at memory, looking at network, and looking at disk. And I have the ability to also take a look at historical data as well, so that I can do troubleshooting in case an issue may have happened over the weekend and I come back to the office on Monday. Now, last but not least, we're gonna take you into our Hyper-V management, which is the richest area to explore. With Hyper-V management, we offer again that same hierarchical view, and then also give you the ability to go and break it down into different categories. We also have a concept of categories and workloads. So for example, if I want to go and tag a particular service that's gonna be part of my 5.9 service or part of my financial department, I can go and pick a VM and give it this classification. This is essentially a way to go and add a new filter on it so that I can easily see all of my services in a single view. Let's go ahead and go back to our traditional view here and we'll take a look at it at the cluster level. From here, we have all different types of filtering that are built in. I can even go and edit my filters and build conditional statements into this so that I only see certain VMs in my infrastructure that meet different types of criteria. From here as well, I also have the ability to go and configure cluster, configure migration, configure Hyper-V replica. I can test my cluster. I can run validation against it. If I go take a look at the settings of an individual host, I can configure everything just like I would with Hyper-V Manager. And then I also have the ability to actually clone any of these changes to other nodes in the cluster. So I can make a configuration change in one place and ensure that I get unified consistency throughout my infrastructure. Now, probably my favorite new feature that we've mentioned a couple of times is the ability to easily connect to that VM using our RDP session. In this case, we call this guest console. So what you can see here is as I click on any VM that's running, I immediately get the RDP connection to it. From here, I can send commands, I can log in. So imagine the time savings that this gives you, being able to centrally manage and connect to any VM on the spot in real time. So this would be extremely valuable to users. Now we have traditional features of functionality you would expect for any VM. Monitoring it, editing the properties, starting it, 
shutting it down, and of course, having replication built directly into this. From here, instead of just looking at the VMs, we also have the ability to manage all of my storage objects. We have the ability to manage all of my networking objects, and we can even go and configure software-defined networking. So hopefully, as you can see, with 5.9 Manager Data Center Edition, we not only have all the same features of SC VMM, we have all the features of System Center, and we've now built them into a unified product. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Ryan. I believe we're going to do a gift card drawing, and then we'll open it up to questions. So please start using the chat window. Please start typing in any questions that you have for us related to System Center, Hyper-V, or, of course, Five9. All right, guys. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for, for attending today's session. Uh, I have a, uh, a randomly drawn name from uh, one of our social media specialists, uh, Frank Rodriguez. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you are the winner. I will reach out to you on your email. Congratulations. Um, but if you didn't win this time, that's okay, guys. We're going to be doing a lot of these different types of webinars. We'll have all sorts of cool prizes, cool gift cards you know, to give away. So please, please stay tuned to email the social media and you'll be able to join more. Um, so with that, you know, uh, Frank Rodriguez, again, I will uh, reach out to you via email to, to connect with you. Uh, so, so Simon, you know, we have, we have quite a few questions here and I know that we're running shortly at a time. Uh, you know, on this webinar, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, if we, if we can't get to all of your questions, what we can do is we have them all recorded and we'll have somebody follow up. We'll have a technical engineer answer those questions for you. Uh, some of them are related to manage, manage your data center. Some of them are related to SCBMM. Uh, Simon's always a great resource to that, so we can help answer some of those questions. Uh, with that being said, uh, let me kind of start back at the beginning because, you know, we've had quite a few. We do have a lot of questions. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go through some of these, uh, Simon, and, you know, the ones that you can answer, great. You know, otherwise, you know, we might have to, you know, answer another time. But I have a question here. Uh, are you able to mi uh, do micro segmentation with Hyper-V? That seems like a more uh, Hyper V focused question. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, micro segmentation, um, that generally is related to breaking down a service of a virtual machine into discrete components. Uh, the most common term that we hear used around that today is containers or containerization. This is possible uh, using Microsoft technologies. Technically, it uses the Hyper-V hypervisor, but it is a different type of component than a virtual machine. It is actually called a container. So yes, Microsoft, Microsoft Hyper-V, uh, and even uh, Five9 Manager, we have some basic support of containers. Uh, what you ultimately want to think about with containers is what type of workload do you want to run in it? Traditional server-based workloads often don't work well with containers. Generally, what are you going to see containers used for are cloud-enabled workloads, workloads that may need to easily scale up or scale down different layers, such as its networking stack or its storage stack. So short answer is yes, Hyper-V does support this. It's known as Hyper-V containers. Um, a lot of integration is still being built around this, as this is a fairly new technology released with Windows Server 2016. Cool. Thanks, Simon. Uh, I got another question here about the, the Five9 solution, asking if you monitor both hosts and the VMs. Absolutely. Great question there. Best practice is to configure monitoring for the entire stack. So the hosts, the virtual machines, the services running inside the virtual machines, the physical networks, the virtual networks, the physical storage, the virtual storage, users, access, control, everything. So great question, but absolutely, you want to have that end-to-end -end monitoring. And 5.9 Manager can provide that. We can monitor all of those physical and those virtual resources for you, just like System Center Operations Manager can. Cool. Uh, I've got another pretty interesting question here about uh, Manager Data Center. Does MDC come with a PowerShell module? Uh, what are my options? Should I want to automate tasks? Oh, that's a great question we often hear. So 5.9 Manager is actually built on top of PowerShell. So behind the scenes, you're already, we are already calling PowerShell commandlets. So the way you want to think about that is, yes, this is completely supported. You can do PowerShell, but we don't actually need or have any specific commandlets built for 5.9 Manager because they are already available through Hyper-V. So as an example, 
If you want to do a Hyper-V replication command, you wouldn't call 5.9 Manager to do that. You would call the one that's already running behind the scenes to do that Hyper-V replica. So in either case, yes, you can go and use PowerShell with or without 5.9 Manager. Cool. Thanks, Simon. And, you know, just to add on to that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there, there's also a feature built into MDC where they'll actually display the, the PowerShell command lit after a, uh, after a um, task is executed. Am, am I right on that? Yeah, that's a very useful feature System Center has, um, 5.9 Manager has. But essentially, if you want to go and do a script, meaning you want to go and perform the same task five times, ten times, you don't want to go click, click, click through a wizard five or ten times. So what you'll find is at the, at the end of many of these scripts, wizards, and interfaces, there is a button that will say show the script. It shows you that underlying PowerShell command lips. You can then copy that, tweak the variables, and then just run the script each time to, again, help you scale up and automate your management. Great. Thanks, Simon. And I know that we're running out of time. So before I have you close out, uh, there are some questions here about when we're going to officially release Manager Data Center 2.0. Uh, we're going to push a lot of the, the, the customer announcements and some of those things uh, out on Tuesday of next week. Uh, but if you go to, um, you know, 59 manager or 59.com slash data center now, you can still download a trial version of that and see the, the break brand new uh, Manager Data Center 2.0. Uh, but uh, we're really appreciative of all of our customers who joined the call today. We're very appreciative of all of uh, the new prospects who are interested in learning how they can either improve their SCVMM instance or look for an alternative that might be able to help them while still remaining in the Microsoft stack. And of course, Simon, thank you so much for uh, helping us with this educational and helpful webinar today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And for everybody else out there, you know, remember you do have lots of different options of how you manage your Hyper-V environment. I would strongly can ask you to consider 5.9 Manager as the easiest and most affordable one to give you all of those same features and functionality. Great. And and so just a reminder, guys, uh, everybody who did ask a question, uh, we do have those recorded. We'll have somebody get back to you. If you think Think of any other questions, uh, feel free to email us at uh, sales at 59.com and we'll be happy to answer your questions any way we can. So thank you so much. This concludes today's webinar and we'll speak to you next time. Thanks everybody. Goodbye.